The other day I stumbled upon a pretty staggering number. Over the last three years, the amount of burnouts have more than doubled in my country. That's Belgium. It's pretty safe to assume other countries in Europe face the same issue. And that's really not good. <laughs> and there's no vaccine for that one. You know what? We don't stop anymore. Work has completely invaded our private life. It started with laptops some 20 years ago. Suddenly it was possible to take your job back home and uh, after that there were the smartphones and everyone was always accessible. Now in the beginning it was not done to call a colleague outside business hours. But today, between emails, text messages and face-to-face -face calls... Sir? Yes. And what will be the next stage? Even our holidays aren't safe anymore. And the whole Corona working from home saga was the finishing touch of the blurring of the lines between work and life balance. So today there is no line anymore and there is no balance anymore. Our brain still needs to disconnect. I've been repeating this over and over again. The five pillars of a healthy brain, remember? L-M-N-O-P. The P stands for pause. Pause as in a break. Stop. That thing we don't do anymore. Slow down! Slow our brain is not a supercomputer. It is a biological structure with many flaws and limitations. It is though the most advanced biological structure in the known universe, which is a pretty cool thing, especially because we all have one of those, but it is not by no means limitless. On the contrary, it does work better under certain circumstances and will underperform in other circumstances. And there is a Goldilocks zone, you know, an area of optimal stimulation. If you don't stimulate your brain enough, scientists talk about this impoverished environment, which is to blame. Your your brain will be bored or stuck in its comfort zone and daily habits and will just underperform. Come on, man, I'm comfortable. Hello? Now, if on the contrary, you create enough stimulation, you get what scientists call an enriched environment, where the brain flourishes and neuroplasticity and neurogenesis will thrive. But go too far in that stimulation and it goes wrong again. If you overstimulate the brain, if you never stop, you create a hostile or toxic environment for the brain. Too much pressure, too much work, too much of everything. No time to disconnect and process information and you lose all the benefits of the enriched environment again. The richness becomes a burden. The brain slows down. It works suboptimally and starts sending out distress signals. Focus and memory gets affected. The quality of our sleep deteriorates. We feel stressed and anxious. Before we realize it, we're in this negative spiral. P stands for pauses. I've been saying for years now that time has become a luxury commodity. But to the brain, it's no luxury. It's basic maintenance. It's just good practice. Good old common sense. From the brain's perspective, you can't just add stuff indefinitely to your to-do list. There's this house curve, or bell curve if you prefer, where below a certain point we're just wasting time and potential, and above a certain point we're again working suboptimally and actually harming ourselves. Now this point is different for all of us, but how our brain works is the same. We all need to pause, to take that break, to have moments where we slow down and even disconnect. The Empire may be gracious at all. So take a look at your life. What does your environment look like? Is it impoverished, enriched or hostile? Share in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to know how to create an enriched environment for your brain, well, go to brainacademy.com. You join our 350,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen.